Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are taking a look at the Winter 24 release notes. These just came out the other day. Uh, specifically, we are looking at the Flow Builder updates that are coming with the new release. The link to the release notes is in the description of the video if you want to check it out for yourself. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I'm putting out new Salesforce content each week. And let's go ahead and jump into this video. All right, the first update we have is build screen flows re reactive components that is generally available with this release. I know I've covered this in the previous videos for the other releases, but it reduces the number of screens that users click through and you can build screens that feel like a single page application with reactive flow components. Previously, if you needed a component to react to changes in another component, you place them on separate screens, but now you're gonna be able to do this in the same screen. Next, we have the idea exchange delivered, create custom error message in record triggered flows. So if you're not familiar with idea exchange, this is where the Salesforce community can post um, updates they would like to Salesforce, and then you can upvote them. That way they get more visibility to Salesforce and occasionally Salesforce will pick these up and then make the improvements to the environment. This is an example of one of those. So let's go ahead and open this one up and take a look at it. So now when a user performs an action like deleting a record that triggers a flow, sometimes the flow runs into an error. Before, when the flow failed, it wasn't possible to display a error message to the user. Now you can inform the user exactly what caused their operation to fail so they can fix the problem and try again. And they have a little screenshot here of what it looks like, how you can add in a little custom error message. This is a great improvement and this was such a weakness in the screen flow uh, build environment. I'm so happy they are adding this in and I can't wait to see it in action. The next update we have is send Salesforce data to an external server without code via HTTP callout that is generally available. So if you can't get enough of the HTTP callout, now you can use the post method to send Salesforce data to an external server in Flow Builder. This feature now generally available includes some changes since the summer 23 release more easily integrate external data with the new put, patch, and delete methods, give more content HTTP calls parameters, validate samples faster, and get more information about the external service registration with more organized sections of parameters. So this is a good update that's coming out that's generally available. Next, we have transform your data in flows, and this is gonna be in beta. So transform collections of data between flow resources with the new transform element in Flow Builder. Combined with the action element that makes an HTTP callout, you can build a flow that fully integrates data outside of Salesforce with no code. Previously, you built a flow that included the loop element and the assignment element. Now you can do it all with the transform element when transforming data in screen flows auto launch flows with no triggers and record triggered flows. Let's open up to take a look and see if they have more info about this. So it looks like we have an example here for us of the new transform element here that's in beta. So let's read through the example they give here. It says the agent's customer has an account in Salesforce. The customer's order data is stored in a system outside of Salesforce. To update the order record in Salesforce, the flow gets the latest order data from the external system and transforms the data so the flow can save the changes in Salesforce. And there it is there. And it looks like this is how you kind of map everything up. And we scroll down, you can build in some formulas here as well and looking at the debug as well here. So this is a nice feature that's being added in. Uh, this definitely helps flows to be more powerful now, especially with no code options. All right, create auto launch flows based on data changes in data cloud. You can now start a data cloud triggered flow based on changes in a data model object or calculated inside object. For example, you can update a unified individual's loyalty status based on changes to their loyalty balance. All right, taking a look at the article here. So now from setup in the quick find box, enter flow and then select flows. You can create a new flow and then select data triggered flow. Has a little, looks like a rabbit symbol here. In the flow start element, select the data space, the object, and define the conditions that trigger the flow. You fill all your information out here. And yep, that's how you create your flow. So that's pretty cool. We're adding this in too. And this is a big update here. Save a flow without configuring some of the elements. 
Now, if you've messed with flows at all, you know that whenever you create a flow, you have to have a element connect to the start element and fill out all the information to be allowed to save. Now, whenever you create a flow, you're now able to save at any point. So right here, it says errors that previously prevented saving are now just warnings. You can save flows without fully configuring the start elements and record trigger flows and create elements and of all flows. We'll open it up and see if they have any more, maybe screenshots or details of that message they're talking about. Yeah, it looks like we do have some pictures here. Now looking at the screenshot here, it looks like you have the error message here. We can look at number four. It says, save your work before fully configuring start elements and record trigger flows and create record elements. And you can move from one updated element to another without completing the elements configurations. You can identify the elements that have not been fully configured because of this symbol here, but that does not prevent you from saving the record here. This is a nice update because it is annoying sometimes whenever you start creating flows and you're not able to save at the very beginning. So it's a nice update to see. Screen flow components retain values after state changes. So screen flows now retain values when a user resumes a paused flow, experiences an input validation error, or returns to an earlier screen. Previously, if you don't provide a default value when configuring the name, address, data, table, email, or other components, the flow removed user specified values when these events occurred. These changes apply only to flows that are running on API version 59 or later. We'll open this up here and take a look at the screenshots they have. Basically, if you advance to a screen flow, maybe there's four screens, you're on the third screen and you go back to screen two, any of the values you entered in on screen three may be removed. And it looks like they didn't provide us any additional images for this one, but I'm glad to see this update going in because we've seen this issue with some of the flows we've been doing, and I'm glad to see this update coming out. Now we have refresh values between screens for more components. You can now refresh the values of choice, date, data and time, number, currency, text, and long text area components when a user navigates to a previous screen and then forward again. For example, a user enters the cost of three services on the first screen. When the user navigates to the next screen, the screen flow displays the total cost. If the user returns to the first screen and changes a value, you can refresh the total cost on the next screen or leave it unchanged. However, if a user navigates to a previous or later screen and then returns to the current screen a second time, the flow does not update the reactive component again. Let's open up, take a look and see if we have more info. All right, so we do have a screenshot here. It says use values from when the user last visited the screen or refresh inputs to incorporate changes. That's really cool to see. I like the example they used. It is unfortunate that if a user goes to the second screen and they have the three values inputted to see the total and it goes back to the first one, it refreshes that only one time. So if a user repeatedly goes back from screen two to one, it only refreshes one time. So I don't really like that limitation, but maybe that update for that will come in the future, but at least we're getting this update now for the screen flows, making them more powerful. So I'm glad to see that coming into play. Get data cloud records more easily in Flow Builder. Salesforce objects and data cloud objects are now organized in separate sections in Flow Builder. When you select a data cloud object, an object card provides more details. And I open up the tab here. It looks like we got some screenshots here. So in the get records element, select whether to get records from a data cloud object or a Salesforce object, and then select the object. So you can see right here, here's the little section here. So that's a nice little add-on we are getting with this update as well, especially if you are working with Data Cloud. This is a nice enhancement for you. Now, find flow resources more easily and create record elements. Now it's easier to find and select a record or record collection and create record elements in auto layout. With this update, Flow Builder takes the first step towards improved resource selection experience. I'm sure they have some screenshots for us to look at with this one. All right, look in here, we have the create records element and select use all values from a record. Recognize resource types quickly with more intuitive icons and create resource faster with the new resource option that has been moved to always show in the footer of the menu. Get helpful information about a resource without leaving the menu by hovering over the resource then hovering over. So it looks like right here, we, have, we can create a new resource and if you hover over this one, it gives you the API name and the data type selected. Now, this is a nice little additional feature that's being added on to be able to create 
record collections. I like that they're adding this in. It makes it way more intuitive. And yeah, especially if, you, if you've if you ever created a flow and forgot to create your record collection variable and you're in the middle of your flow, like, oh man, I got to go back out and create it. Now you're going to be able to do that right in your create records or edit re create records screen. Love this feature that's being added in. Next to last, we have use weight elements and more type of flows. The wait for amount of time element and the wait until date element are now available in scheduled triggered flows, auto launch flows, and orchestration. Previously, these were wait elements were only available for journeys. This is a great new update coming in, especially with the scheduled triggered flows and the auto launch flows. That is a great, I've been waiting for this feature myself with some of the projects that I've been a part of. I'm very happy to see this in there and I can't wait to implement it into new projects. But if you don't know what the wait element is, basically you could have a scheduled trigger flow that runs, um, let's just say once a week at Monday at 8 a.m. And the flow will run, gather some sort of information, maybe make some updates, but you want it to send an email out at the end and you want that email to be delayed by three hours. Previously with a scheduled trigger flow, you were not able to do that. Now with this wait element, you will be able to delay the execution of that email in this example for the amount of time specified. And the last update we have for advanced pause flow elements is now named wait for condition. They renamed it from advanced pause to wait for condition so that all wait elements have similar terminology. The functionality of the element is unchanged. It's a nice update. The naming conventions to keep it from being so confusing. So I can appreciate that update. Overall, we got a lot of flow updates um, for flow builder this time. And I know based on some of the, let's see what we got here. We got more flow updates. We have flow trigger, flow runtime management extension, and flow and process release updates. So we got quite a bit of updates for flow this time. I'm really happy with some of the enhancements and I can't wait to see these in our org. But if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. I'm going to be coming out with more videos for the winter 24 release over some of the highlights here. So make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next video.